let's get started with living dialogue. Well, what do I mean by that, right? What is living dialogue exactly? We all know what dialogue is, right? It's some, it's what characters say. It's when people speak, um, when characters speak. But what I mean by living dialogue, and I'm going to raise the bar for us here, and it should be raised high, let's face it, right? Nobody ever said that this thing, writing fiction, was going to be easy, and I certainly never said it. But what I mean by living dialogue is dialogue that's brilliantly crafted, perfectly vi vivid, exactly appropriate, layered and nuanced, but really, most of all, it just sounds right. It sounds like a person is talking, right? So you'll see in parentheses there, uh, after brilliantly crafted, we're going to talk about the basics. And that's what we're really talking about today in, in this first part. We're going to get into the actual nuts and bolts. How do you write this? Right? You have your hands poised over your computer keyboard or your typewriter, I guess, maybe some of you, or your, your pen in hand, etc. How do you actually, what, what keys do you push? What little symbols do you make in order to actually convey that a character is speaking? And I know that that may sound like, oh, great, oh, come on, man, I went to, you know, sixth grade, right? Give me a break. But there's a little bit more to it than that, right? There's a lot more to it, in fact, than you might have gotten, you know, going all the way through high school English or even into some college courses. So we're going to get into that and remind ourselves, I guess, of some of those rules. And look at maybe some of the some more that you hadn't uh, hadn't thought of or, or hadn't seen. So this includes dialogue attribution, verbs of speaking, uh, beats. We'll talk about exactly what that means. Um, and punctuation we'll, we'll look at as examples throughout. So where do you put the comma? Where do you put the quotation marks and so on? We're going to look at in those examples of other things as we go along. So it may seem like I'm digressing, but that punctuation is vitally important. Right, But let's start with this idea. First, you have to know the rules, then you can break them. This is fiction. This is a creative pursuit. Right? There's no one way to do it. There's no best way to do it. There's no only way to do it. And sure, those rules are there. But let's face it, the rules in the English language, especially American English, and there is a difference um, between American and, and UK English and so on, those rules tend to be soft in places, and they're very mutable, and they'll change, you know, or the way we speak in particular will change very dramatically in some cases, depending on what part of the country we live in, how old we are. Um, all sorts of things will affect that. And those things will affect the way your characters are speaking as well. That's stuff that we're going to get into more deeply in part two. But, you know, we're going to look at... at at all of this stuff kind of all together as we go along, right? But again, the rules for writing, the rules that a copy editor would apply to your manuscript, you got to know those, right? There's a difference between knowing the rule and intentionally breaking it, trying to do something new, trying to do something interesting, um, using that for some effect, for some pacing, etc., and not knowing the rule at all in the first place. And it's not okay to not know the rule. <laughs> you got to know the rule. And then know when to play with it, know when to bend it, know when to throw it away completely, right? So let's get into that stuff. 